so we are getting right into the action. Pascal Kim on the Runic deck, but a specific one. He is not only playing Runic Sprite, he is also playing Runic Life Twin Sprite. Ooh, yeah. Quite a lot going on. Yeah, exactly. He's bringing three engines into his main deck, so um, honestly, there's not that much space for non-engine cards because you are playing three engines and that takes up a lot of space, but still he has managed to put in a couple. Oh, and we are seeing the starting end of GM and he is actually opening Book of Eclipse oh, and evenly wow. matched. And that is a pretty strong combo against sprite strategies, but Pascal's hand is amazing as well. He is opening with the Leela and that's not that much you that's want. That's all you can yeah, ask for, right? Want. Has <laughs> like, he got any, any sprite cards to go with it? I mean, that worst case brings you into your sprite engine because you could go into Gigantic with those two here if you would like to, but that would somehow um, rule you out of your life twin engine a little bit, then. So let's see where he's going because at the moment he has no access to his sprite engine just yet. So that's the thing with those decks where you have multiple engines. Sometimes you're only going to draw into one of them or two of them and then you just don't get access to the third and then you're missing out on a crucial part of it. But, but there we see the no. next engine. And that is more than enough to access all of the engines. You can summon yep. the Hugin, search for the Runic Fountain and then after that overlay with the Leela to go into a gigantic special summon out the blue, the jet, you are safe from Nibiru, then you can just safely go for something else and you have access to the Leela Kizikil engine after that. Yeah, great upside for running Sprite in this event because Nibiru is a card that a lot yeah. of people are thinking about and if you just have a card which you want to summon, Gigantic Sprite, naturally giving you protection from Nibiru, that, that's that got to be a good feeling. Yeah, and it naturally will be summon number four to Act to, to play around that Nibiru, especially when your opponent let you start, right? When, yeah. you, when your opponent is going second, you expect him to play cards like Nibiru, and uh, there's no Nibiru in this opening hand, but still it's better to play around the Nibiru here by summoning Gigantic, and it's going to resolve. And Basti, you said earlier, there's not a, f a, not a lot of space for non-engine cards. However, there's also not a lot of space for engine cards in the extra deck. We were seeing only one Gigantic Sprite. Wow, you're right. I just saw that in the list as well. That is very uncommon because I saw in modern sprite builds that people tend to up the numbers of yeah. gigantic sprites again. They were uh, playing triple gigantic sprite and uh, they not do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. Ooh, that comes with Jet. But also there's something pretty interesting in Guillaume's hand because he has the Evenly, which is an incredible breaker of fields, you know? But <laughs> He doesn't have anything to play with. Yeah, you couldn't even tell what deck he's bringing, but it is branded, as you can already see on the screen. And I mean, one branded fusion for turn can solve a lot of issues yeah. there, let's be honest. And there's uh, 101 ways to get to branded fusion. Indeed, in just Aluba right? does it as well, for sure. Which he's also only running two of. Interesting decision there, for sure. I think that's one of the best ways to get to your branded fusion, but let's see. Like, there is triple tactic talent, which is also good, because probably you're just going to use the Book of Eclipse in main phase. Your opponent has no choice really but to negate it with Carrot. That also makes your talents live. So I think we could see a really, really impressive turn by Gilem when he resolves that evenly matched then as well. Oh, now we're going for an IP in the extra monster zone. And I think that now we're going to see the Kizikiel. And then we are going for this incredibly funny combo where you go for Kizikiel, special summon out the Leela, go for Leela, special summon back the Kizikiel, draw, and then go <laughs> yeah, for another yeah, Kizikiel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is a, it is a strange looking combo if you've not seen it before. So obviously you only get the effect of the live twin monsters if they're summoned while you control the other live twin monster. Oh, that's uh, the uh, evil twin monster. Evil twin. Yes. I'm going exactly. to get <laughs> Evil twin, live twin, <laughs> Kizikiel, Leela, yeah. But so you get the one draw and then you set up to special summon to get a card structure in your Does opponent's Does Pascal turn. even have another Rooney card? I think it's really... Oh yeah, he, no, he does have... Oh, oh yeah, there's Slumber the in his hand. Yeah. Okay. There's Slumber in his hand, yeah. I'll let him draw three cards, I believe he's activated. He, he did, did he discard a Runic for the cost of Hugin earlier in the turn? So there should be two in the grave and then the Slumber. That should, would be huge make if three. it would be the draw three. So, and now we are probably going to see, finally for Pascal as well, what his opponent is on because he... You Runic Slumber is making your opponent banish three. Okay, it's only, only a draw two. two, but still, we have to banish three cards there for Gilem. We, 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 can't, we, we are already resolving the Runic Fountain, but we haven't even resolved the Runic Slumber yet, because that is uh, necessarily part of the effect to banish three cards there for the Runic Slumber. Hopefully our judge will catch that in a moment. It might actually be a benefit for Gilem, because he gets yeah, because he he's might not banish giving away anything. A, well, no, but getting oh, to could, banish cards, he could banish Tri Brigade Mercuria, oh. he could banish uh, the Despian Tragedy, for sure, yeah. There comes Sunny Snitch now. Okay, I think, yeah, our, our judges have picked up on it that Runic Slumber actually is uh, resolving there. Yeah, 
I mean, Runic Slumber is not in the graveyard anymore, but for Pascal sure. Pascal just checking. <laughs> no, I didn't use Runic Slumber. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not going to be... Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. But of course, all of the Runic effects, when they are resolving their usual effect, they are going to banish cards. So, this is an Ash Blossom, this is another <laughs> Ash Blossom, and then there's Fusion Deployment. So the last card gives it away here. Pascal now finally knows what he's up against. He does know that Fusion Deployment can only be branded, pretty much. Or it could be something very, very strange. <laughs> indeed, it could be. Indeed, it could be. VWXYZ. If okay. you are the deck master that can build that deck for this tournament, go ahead. It my could friend. summon a gay guardian. Watch monster, me try. You know, it could summon an ABC. True. I mean, that could be anything for sure. I think if you're Gillum, you're happy to see those banishes because you don't want to see Ash in this situation. Oh, there's Brandon Loss. And I mean, let's be honest, if we can draw into Brandon Fusion, that Brandon Loss is insanely strong. On the other hand, do we even negate here with Carrot? Right, because it would, be the only card. Yeah, Carrot, it, too, yeah. it would be the only card that gets booked. Uh, what you want to do here is, I think, actually... Oh, well, you have the IP to get rid of the Leela on the field, which is just an extra body at this point, but I think you can just... Oh, he is negating it, though. Oh, he is negating it, Okay, then... to, to get the to get the Leela into the graveyard. And though. then he can unresolve, immediately tribute it back to get another draw. That's I'm interested in that, because it does play into Triple Tactics talent. The thing is, IP is always going to make you play into the Triple Tactic talents, right? That's because true. But you're you, always going to resolve might, the IP. I, I mean, currently, it would force Guillaume to do something else yeah. to trigger, you know, to force out the oh, IP. Oh, but there comes a call by the Grave by Gilem. Oh. So that will deny the draw one there. Oh, and also, Lila doesn't target. He, I know oh. he, he pointed to the Kizikiel, but... Uh, but is there? You can just summon oh, out that the. Comes frost, yeah. Would you rather frost. have? You'd rather have the frost in the graveyard, though. Well, I suppose yes. you can link it off for IP, so it doesn't doesn't yeah. matter. Also, you had to summon. something. You have to summon something, yeah. But I was wondering if it was an upside or a downside getting to summon the Kizuko frost. And now, what do you do first? Go you, do you go for uh, the triple tactic talents first, or do you go for battle phase and evenly matched first? Uh, in my head, I think talents. I don't see a reason to probably right. That no. makes you plan your turn yeah, a because, little bit further. You know, you you could use the talents in main phase one and then the evenly matched in. Yeah, in yeah. The battle phase if you still want to. I don't know if you need to go for evenly match because the outcome of the board will be the exact same. So there is no Probably. real follow up in this situation, except Look, for mean, the IP. And this one will. Do you think? Come down uh, do you think the fact that Pascal is uh, linking off now means that we, we announced the battle phase? Battle for phase sure, yeah, for that. Sure. Oh, but look, we Ooh. were wondering about that. Nightmare Griffin actually is in the exit deck of Pascal and is now also in the first game of his tournament, uh, hitting the field. And that's a card we haven't seen that much in sprite builds, but now it is featured here in his list, and it's pretty interesting because that makes it hard for GLM to actually. Um, use monster effects because he has to get into that extra monster zone there. Well, fortunately, there is an extra monster zone right above the. Yeah, <laughs> the Griffin it is, but generously provided. also we resolved it to draw a card. There comes evenly matched now in the battle phase, and we set that starter there with the Griffin. So that's another card we have to banish now. Or is it maybe the only card we keep? What do you keep? Do you keep the fountain? Probably. Yeah, we yeah, have to keep fountain. You're yeah, right. Fountain. We, we probably have to keep the fountain. There are still cards to be drawn, <laughs> but uh, there's something that I would call oh, it. Oh, okay. okay. We're getting okay. rid of the fountain. I see. Maybe I see. he values the Griffin's uh, sort of Probably. passive effect enough. I mean, he can't activate Aluba if he special summons it, right? Exactly. That's true. But the thing is, if your opponent has branded fusion, he can instantly get into the yep. extra monster zone. Oh, and there's Talons, and it's probably. Does he want to take here? I mean, he has no sure, play. There's, if he no, takes. there's no use for taking. Yeah. It, yeah. So. Do we see Branded Fusion branded here? Branded Opening, and that is oh, not the cards card you don't want to have. So that was very heads up by Pascal there. But I think you could just summon the Fallen of Albus. I think that Griffin only prevents Is it only no, is it Special, special Summit Monsters? monsters? Right? If it's only Special, special Summit Monsters, monsters yeah. But then you can also just... Oh no, oh, he specialed the Aluber. He could have searched for Aluber and Normal did it better as well. That yeah. works just as well. Oh yeah, that is actually true. And he could have also gone for Fallen of Albus and take away the Griffin to summon out the Mirror J Dragon. Yep. But this is this is not going to work out. Yeah. Now he will Maybe have to. Oh, he out. even discarded the Albus. This is not looking bright here for Gilem. That plan didn't go as he planned, so it goes <laughs> back over to Pascal. Pascal just nods his hand while his opponent is setting two cards and passing it right over to him. And now Pascal drew a lot of cards in the process of his first turn, so he is well equipped to get back into this game even though he just got evenly matched for four cards. Do you think the Griffin, maybe Pascal, thought the Runic cards didn't draw enough by themselves? He just thought, maybe I'll draw even more cards with the, uh, the co-linked Griffin. 
Probably, yeah. He was like, I'm safe because I'm in main phase two, so all of the cards in my hand are already enough, so maybe the Griffin is just preventing him a little bit more, so I think it was a heads up play by him. It was pretty smart, not gonna lie. If you, as long as you've got the second fountain in your deck to search out. Yeah, indeed, indeed. What I was going to say earlier is that the downside of the deck is that you are going to draw into so many cards that don't really help you with your fountain after your board is already developed. You have, you have a monster on board still, and now you have the Life Twins in the hand. Or, or he also still has a Sunny Snitch. He had to discard the Kizikil, which was okay then, but... Uh, yeah. This deck gives you a lot of draw power, and as soon as you develop a board... Oh, we're passing, passing it over! Back. So Pascal just did not have all the cards he needed, apparently. And now there is a chance... No, wait, is there something to Special Summon of Branded Banishment? I don't think there is, right? He has Fallen of Albus in the graveyard. But does Branded Banishment work with I've Fallen of Albus? No, it's one no. Despia monster oh, oh, oh. or one level 8 or higher fusion monster, so that does not work for the moment. So that's just another set card being at the back row of Gilam. Now, you, you, yeah, you have to banish... Oh, I see. So, yeah, you can't use the Fallen of Albaz in the graveyard. Yep. Oh, oh but I there's <laughs> Runic Tip, I think, for turn for Pascal Akeem. That's a huge pickup for him there. Yeah. Would you compare Runic Tip to Sky Striker Engage? It is pretty <laughs> similar. Not gonna lie, that maybe is the He's modern been... day Sky Striker Engage. Yeah, right. I wanna say eventually it lets you draw more cards. Yeah, yeah I was gonna true. say it does basically draw one because you get the other Runic card, which will then be shuffled back with the. With it's that basically itself in the fountain. engage into engage into engage just in one card already. <laughs> just for comparison, I'm going to bring the card up. <laughs> it has to happen. It's the signature card of Pascal, of course, the card that he won YC's London 2019 with. And now we're going into battle phase, so Pascal just, of course, not using any runic cards before the battle phase because he wants to get rid of that Aluber first. But the thing is, now the Brennan Banishment yeah. is live as there is Aluber in the graveyard. Pascal is like, yep, that's fine. And what are we even fusion summoning into here? We go with the Aluber and the Nightmare Griffin. That just gives us immediate access to... Is it Albion or Lubellion we're going to summon out no, here? They need Fallen of Albus. You need Fallen of Albus. Oh, you're those, right. So, so it would just be Kuridus, right? Probably Kuridus. <laughs> I think the Despia extra deck monsters do get points for being the hardest to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> for sure they do, for sure they do. Yeah, but it is Despian Kuridus and it is being summoned in the extra monster zone. Pascal quickly picks it up again. And I mean, all the runic cards aren't really known to have like big attack points. So I don't know whether Despian Kuridus is really the card you need versus that deck necessarily. Does he have, it might be it's just his only target. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. He only had that option there for that particular moment. It is mildly annoying to get rid of, right? Because if you destroy it, then your opponent gets to summon a branded monster from the deck. Uh, Fallen of Albas specifically, I Oh, is it, fall, is it a Fallen of Albas monster? But did he just do that? Randomly, like, did he just oh, you can activate also banishment at some point? And because now I just see Pascal going for plays. Yeah, I think just after uh, the Nightmare Griffin ran over the Aluber, he was like, "Yeah, I now have Aluber in the graveyard, so my Brandon banishment can be activated." And that's what he just did there right away in battle phase. I can play a card. Let me play a card. Yeah, I mean, he didn't get to play that many so far, so that's fair. <laughs> the Nightmare Griffin, he he didn't like it. Absolutely not. <laughs> after I what it did to why. his Aluber. <laughs> yep. So there comes Runic Tip now. I mean, you can't play Guillaume, right? He just wants to participate in this, and I can just fully understand that. So we are searching for Freezing Curses. This time we are banishing one card, and it is Fallen of Albas. And honestly, banishing Fallen of Albas versus Branded Despia is so, so good, because they need that in the deck to resolve Branded Fusion. I was going to ask, is that his second? Or does I think he run that two yeah. or three. He does run. Uh, he does run free, and I think okay. that is the correct choice at the moment. Yeah. At the moment, you gotta play free because Kashira is banishing cards face down from your deck. Runic is banishing cards from your deck as well. So you gotta make sure you are able to resolve Brand Fusion. And it's not a, a bad draw by any means. You no, can just no, normal no. summon it and use its effect to threaten Indeed. your opponent's extra deck monsters. It's a super poly with legs. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed it is. But your opponent can respond, which That's, makes yeah. it significantly <laughs> less Le strong. Legs are normally useful, but in this case, I'm not sure you want the legs. <laughs> <laughs> so there comes another Link to summon. And it looks like Pascal actually He's is struggling to, to have resources in his extra deck, right? He that can be an issue when you combine multiple different engines yep. that you don't necessarily... You can put them all in your main deck, but you do need the extra deck to support those. For sure. So I've been, I've been running this deck a lot lately on... Uh, 
without the Rooney cards, though. And uh, yes, <laughs> it is a problem, right? You can easily run through because, especially like the first turn combo, you're using one yeah. or two copies of each of the For Evil sure. Twins. And I mean, this is uh, Evil Twin Kizikal number two already, so yeah. that's also the last one he has in his extra deck. An and extra that is no now one. followed by the last copy of Evil Twin Lila in his extra deck. And so there is no access to Gigantic Sprite anymore, so you can't even extend into your sprite combo and get a smashers to easily get rid of the monster. Now we have picked up freezing curses, which maybe, is also not helping you. Maybe but Pascal's just hoping he'll have runic cards to sort of close out the game. Probably. The, end, even if he runs the runic cards just monster. grind so well, right? They can just yeah. work through boards so good because they are just trading one for one in theory, but then Runic Fountain just makes it an unfair <laughs> trade because you are drawing cards afterwards. And you're like gradually banishing your opponent's yeah. deck. This card, however, Evil Twin's Trouble Sunny, could oh, really help now, card. because this one is at 3.3 attack points. Yeah, okay, okay, I can see it coming. Yep. Is it's this probably. this is the second main phase, right? Yep, it is. So battle phase is not an issue here, but we, yeah, we are going for the Trouble Sunny. And it's very difficult to attack over the Despian Quirtis, right? Because you can use its effect. The good thing is, I think yeah. we already saw Kurikara Divincanate in the hand of Pascal. So as soon as Gilam decides to use the effect of Despian Kuridas in his opponent's turn, that Kurikara is going to be live and then he can just tribute the Kuridas, which is kind of nice. Will that trigger the effect of Kuridas? Um, how does, how does Kuridas get its effect triggered? I think card it only effect. Has, it has, has to be to. a card effect and that this is a tribute, so I guess this would not. Probably not, no. I think this, yeah. It's nice to play Yu-Gi-Oh! with a table judge at the table yeah. so they can tell you all of these things. I want to try some. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, there's Super Polymerization set for Jin and That could be a pretty good card here because both of the monsters on the field are light monsters. So is there the potential to see Super Poly into Garura here, uh, maybe? It would be Mudring. Oh, yeah, Mudring, you're right. Is he even running the Mudring, though? Let me check. He's, he's not playing Mudring, I'm afraid. Then I don't think we're going to see one. <laughs> Probably not. There is Runic Slumber being activated. And Pascal is reading his own card right now. I'm it's interested, yeah, indicator. why it's targeting the, the opponent's monster. Because it can't attack that turn. Oh, then. it stops it from attacking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's the Dark Magician. The ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense is being banished here. Which uh, is actually quite good. Yeah, it means you don't have to send it yourself. Yep. Yeah. It helps you. But I don't know whether we're going to see Gilem resolve Brand of Fusion that game anymore because there are all the Fallen of Albuses being gone. And look, Gilam looked through his extra deck. Is there the Mud Dragon? And then he realizes, no, I did not put it in. So for this particular situation that he encounters here in his first game, in the first featured match of the day, he's not going to be able to resolve Super Polymerization just so there. Activating it would be beautiful here, because obviously the live twin Sunny and Switch has got a... Sunny and Snitch? Sunny and Snitch, yeah. Has got a quick effect. But your opponent wouldn't be able to respond to put it in the graveyard and summon the two Absolutely. live twins back out. Yeah, and I mean, as we saw, Pascal is struggling to have resources in his extra deck by that point. So if you get rid of that Sunny Snitch here, I think you might even be uh, in a spot where you have multiple turns to draw into your engine again, and that could bring you back into this game. Also, as soon as the Trouble Sunny tributes itself, there will be a light and a dark on the field, so... Oh, you're right! There is Kizikil and Lila coming back. I mean, it's two light monsters, right? But now you, you can just... Uh... Hey, wait, no, you still no, don't have it. Can you summon a Garura with those two, perhaps? No, no, it's, it's light and dark. Oh, they yeah, have to true, be true. Oh, they Lila are. is dark, you're right, you're so right. <laughs> so that could work here. Yeah, look at that, super polymerization. Trying to fusion summon the Karidas with the Lila. With your own card effect. Bringing us into... Wait, he, I, I thought... Oh, Draco's oh, yeah. Topelia, oh, right. that makes a lot more sense. That <laughs> works, to be honest. But also, Draco's Topelia just feels like a card that uh, Freezing Curses uh, could really easily take care of, or also Flashing Fire, those are really good answers to just the Draco's Topelia. It can be very annoying against the Sprite deck, right? Because you can target one of their level 2 monsters, make, negate its effect, and make it level and 1. make level 1, that's a crucial part in that matchup, honestly, yeah. I think you can activate... Exactly, you can activate the... Kizikil now, try to bait out the Dracostopelia, try to summon back another monster, and then Pascal Keem's triple tactic talents in hand would be a really good answer to that. 
to uh, possibly gain more advantage to win this game. For sure, eventually. For sure. Oh yeah, we got. Oh, we drew into another, another evenly match. Yeah, Pascal Kim. I think we talked about that in our meta analysis before the event as well. Uh, we think that evenly matched probably Spoiler is one alert. of the. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I mean, it's it's an obvious fact that I have to mention here. I think evenly match is probably one of the strongest cards right now in the format, and that's why I'm absolutely not surprised by Pascal Kim running triple of it in his main deck. Well, according to some preliminary data that Luke was showing me yesterday, evenly matched, the second most popular card wow. at this event, after, I'm sure you can guess. <laughs> Ash Blossom, Ash probably. Blossom yeah, that been yeah, my we've guess, already yeah. seen two copies of that this game as well. So. Absolutely. Uh, but we, we can see a little bit of a downside to the Runic engine at the moment, because we all know when you use the Runic card, you're not going to have your next battle phase. And this game number one is already going on for 20 minutes. You are struggling to close out games because yeah. you're missing the most crucial part of your turn that actually helps you end games because you're not <laughs> having a battle phase. You're not able to battle with your monsters and you're not uh, able to force uh, life point damage to your opponent and therefore you are really yeah. not closing out the game. Oh, there comes Branded opening to protect the Dracostopalia. And that means we're also not going to banish cards from our opponent's deck. But we can still resolve Runic Fountain, of course. The Runic cards, they're very grindy, aren't they? And that you kind of hope at some point when you have six cards that your opponent will just say, pack it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of rely on that, to be honest. <laughs> because if your opponent says, no, we gotta, you got to finish this game, then it can, it can take quite a while to do that. Pascal yeah. can still get rid of the Dracostopelia this turn, by the way, because he has the Trouble Sunny in the graveyard that can just banish itself and then send one of the Evil Twins from the field or from the deck. And I don't think he's, a playing, he's playing a deck one. But you can send one of the Evil Twins from the field to the graveyard and then non-targeting send a card that Guillermo is controlling to the graveyard. And it's Absolutely. nice. It's actually, a, it, most of the time, you don't really want to send monsters from your field to the graveyard, but sending one of the Evil Twins can let you just summon it back again yeah. and get its effect again in your opponent's Ooh. turn. Oh, we're going for... Oh yeah, I was Something. about to say, there, there's no gigantic left in the extra deck. Oh, oh Unchained Abomination is coming in here. That's another Link 4 that Pascal Kim has decided to play. So two not super popular uh, Link 4s being played here by Pascal Kim. The Nightmare Griffin and also the Unchained Abomination we see right here. But this one I think is really, really strong with the For Runic sure. Engine because you have the Flashing Fire and that's basically a pop 2 then. Yeah, yep, and absolutely. you can combine it with your Evil Twins as well. It just yeah. gives you an extra pop, or well, once per turn you get an extra pop every time you yeah. pop something. Yeah. Also, the Life Twins, or the Evil Twins rather, lock you into summoning Fiends from the extra deck, and fortunately, Unchained <laughs> Abomination is, is a pretty a strong fiend. fiend. Yeah. You uh, think Pascal, you know, he, he just realized it now? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, aha! I mean, he was going through his extra deck for uh, like, like a couple well, of can times. I have? That oh, is a this fiend. is great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that, yeah. And um, he has Bright Blue in his hand there, but. Um, even before summoning the Abomination, there uh, was no chance to summon out the blue because blue needs a level or rank 2 and not a link 2. So in that scenario, that wasn't working. Oh, we are negating Redricostopalia here with Freezing Curses. He's, and we are banishing not so interested well. in uh, negating it, but just activating a Runic card. Wait, isn't... I think maybe the Unchained Abomination oh, was no. destroying it in the end phase. Maybe that was... Maybe he chained that to the Unchained Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like what that. happens. Yeah. Oh, and Julian picks up Super Polymerization for turn, but that's his only card in hand. And we all know it has a cost. It has to discard one card. So this card is not doing anything here. And it's going back over to Pascal. But he's Ooh. not going down. Yeah, and he can use this in either end phase. It just says during the end phase. I want to show you guys again so you can read it as well. So that's an easy pop here. And now we actually do have a battle phase, I think. No, no, he, no, used, no, he the... used it in the end phase, yeah. right? He used the yep. freezing curses in the end phase. So we're just going to wait. I mean, our opponent is top decking here. We can always uh, destroy <laughs> the one card that he's, he's bringing to the field with Abomination. So I think Pascal is in a pretty decent situation here. And the top deck for Gilem is not one that he necessarily wants to see. It is the Tribrigate Nakuria, which he sets. And I mean, it's this card going. can also it's, be, yeah, destroyed. be destroyed. Yep, yep. So maybe it would have been better to just keep that card in hand in case you get another turn to work with oh. it. And look, he has a playset in his hand now. Pascal Kim <laughs> drew all three of his evenly matched, and I don't know whether he wants it here. <laughs> How he many has. talents are going on there as oh, well? Oh yeah, there's also two talents, yep. <laughs> but I think he's only running two, so uh, that might be the uh, entirety in his deck. So now I think GM still has some turns because there are no monsters being drawn by Pascal Kim. He just has 3,000 attack points on board and that oh. is an Aluba. Aluba is an excellent draw here if your opponent doesn't have Freezing Curses. Oh, it only works on Special Summon Monsters, I think. Oh, okay. Um, no, so it is doesn't. Is that the Flashing no, Fire? No, that was Flashing Fire. Yeah. 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 
So freezing curse is on Alubur and once more Gilem is looking for his graveyard. There is nothing protecting that. We are banishing three cards, of course, for the freezing curses. And there is, I think, the first branded fusion we see here in this game being banished there. It is one of the downsides of some of the runic cards is that you can't activate them unless your opponent has a monster or you have a clear yeah. extra monster zone. Sometimes with runic, the best approach to play is just not to play. Just don't give just them any them, cards on your board yeah, exactly. to, to activate their runic cards. And look, there's, when they draw runic tip though, they are usually fine because are, runic tip can always be activated. Fetching another runic card from your deck is always going to be possible. And I think you're going to try to activate the runic tip as soon as possible to find something. You don't want, uh, I mean, you, you really want to activate something before the next battle phase. And maybe you're also trying to find a monster at some point because you want to use the sprite blue from your hand. Yeah. <sighs> but with only Kurikaras, even these, and triple tactic talents, <laughs> that's not just going to happen. Look, is we're just going to set another card. Got much left to search with the sprite blue? Well, maybe a jet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sprite Red would be something. Oh yeah, we he has a new for. Sprite Red. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. But it's crazy. He, he basically drew all of his non-engine here. Did he set all three of his evenly matched? Because I don't see yeah. any trap card left <laughs> in his hand. So all of his three background cards there are evenly matched, which is quite ironic and iconic. <laughs> the talent, and he has to set one card as well. Of course, leave open one of these spell traps. Fusion right? deployment. Fusion for deployment. Yep. Better eyes than me. Fusion Deployment actually has quite the interesting target. Not in this deck, though, but I still want to showcase it to our viewers who are not that familiar with the branded deck. You can actually, people usually side deck it, yeah. play the uh, Neo uh, Elemental Hero Aquaneos, and then just special summon out Aqua Dolphin to try to get rid of Absolutely. one of the ashes. Absolutely, but that's not hand. going to happen here anymore in game one, as Pascal Keem is taking this game number one here with his live twin runic strategy. Gilam is conceding and they will be going over to the side decking process here. And that took quite a while. It looked really good right from the get-go, but then it still needed time and time and time. And Pascal yeah. was drawing one non-engine card <laughs> after the other, setting free evenly matched. So what do you think now in game number two? Gilam, as he had before game number one, has the decision here to go first or second. Do you think he's going to make the same decision as he did before game one? I mean, he has seen the Kurikara. Yep. Because he had to discard it. He hasn't seen all the evenly matches. I think True, that he maybe hasn't seen any. <laughs> Pascal is going to side these out. It plays Probably. interesting games with your yeah. opponent, doesn't it? Because if you choose to go second, it's quite uncommon. So your opponent's not going to know whether you're going to choose to go first or second the for the second is, round. I think his side deck is giving me very, very um, good vibes that he's going first here because he is going to side and brand expulsion and also the Jimmy Puppet. But that would usually be your plan going first. But let me tell you, versus runic decks, it's honestly not that great because runic decks are obviously not that reliant yeah. on your monster effects because they have so powerful spell cards. And therefore, the Jimmy Puppet Nightmare is not as strong as it would be in other matchups. But I would say usually that would be his go-to plan it's, it's in game two. It's still really strong. You've got to be honest, it's still a really <laughs> strong play. You're still... I mean, Hugin can't be activated. True. And I mean, it shuts you down all the other engines. You can always chain the runic spell to the branded expulsion, right? That is a good point. So you um, will always get your Hugin, at least. True, true, yeah. 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 Because your opponent, there's no way your, yeah. your opponent's presumably not going to wait for you to activate a runic spell. Before. They, I mean, they, they, they could. could. Yeah, they could but it becomes a little interesting game of chip. But then your opponent just, you know, normal summons a sprite monster and starts special summoning. And, yeah, know. but I mean, you could, worst case, just do it on the normal summon of a sprite monster then. That's true, yeah. It will be interesting it, to see for sure, it, it, but it there are some, some options yeah, for sure. It has sure. different applications. You also don't know what your opponent is bringing into the side deck. Absolutely. Let's see whether Pascal Kim has prepared for the branded matchup. And honestly, he's one of the few players that really is prepared because Biz deals were really not that popular lately anymore, but he's bringing them. He's playing triple Magna Mood and he's playing one Drew Swarm. And honestly, this is really good versus the branded matchup. A triple Tactic Thrust has been a card that was pushing the Bestials out of the meta game. For sure. Also with the Forbidden and Limited list yes. that kind of took out the Telemans deck out for of the sure, competition sure. a bit. At least I think it's still a really strong deck. Yeah. But uh, with the decrease of Magna Moods <laughs> in, <laughs> in main decks and side decks, uh, some decks have become more popular, but they are still strong. I mean, people are playing fewer Triple Tactic Thrust because you're not going to only face Kushtira. Yep. And without Bestials in the format, the card is not as strong as we thought it was. Absolutely true. 
and uh, there's a high risk in letting Pascal start. I mean, Pascal also has a decision to make, though. Yeah. Is he making me start or not? Because if Pascal knows that he's going first, there's one card that he's certainly going to bring in from his side deck. But I think I'm not going to spoil you just yet, because <laughs> maybe we're going to see it later in the game and you're going to see what I'm looking at. But what I'm also looking at with the players right now is that they are ready for game number two. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get back into the action. Let's see game number two here. So we have 16 and a half more minutes <laughs> on the clock. Pascal is going to think that... Oh, wait, he has both actually has a Nibiru and he has a trap card that he was siding in. Oh, it's, oh yeah, now organism. you can see it as well. <laughs> there is the grave of the super ancient organism. So Pascal just wasn't sure. Is he going to let me start or not? And honestly, even going second, yeah. this card oh, yeah, is pretty I, yeah. decent. I really don't dislike the card going second as well. It's weird to side in continuous trap cards going second. The, the only problem and issue I have is trap cards that you have to set when going second versus Despia, they could usually be a victim of the Guardian Camaro that is just being summoned in end phase and that is just going to destroy your back row. Oh, but looks like yeah. he made Pascal start again. Look at that. That I means that Grave of the Super Ancient Organism is going to be live. It's going to be incredible. He's, he, he's got the cross out designator. But I very much doubt <laughs> that he has... Oh, oh but the one of Hoppy's Pepper Duster is being drawn for turn there. That is Kavush. insane. That's devastating. That's the only back removal that Gilam's deck is featuring. We were featuring. discussing this before the, the round started, right? We thought, what outs does Gilam have yes. to suit Grave of the Super Ancient Organism? And we were like, he's got the one Feather Duster. He's, he's uh, not Basti even... said it with the tone, he was like, he has the one feather yeah. dust. Yeah, I didn't expect it to draw it, but just <laughs> casually he picked it up there for turn. And he got rid of the grave of the super ancient organism, which honestly is designed to be sided in with Kashtira, because this is expected to be the most popular deck at the moment. But it's so good for his Brennan as well, because Brennan does not really have a way around it. Kashtira can, can go into their exceeds, but Brennan... After you resolve your Brennan Fusion, you are pretty much left with yeah. only your Fusion. So Gillen's got everything he could ask for here now, right? He's got the Crossout Designator to protect from Ash. If your opponent's got another Hand Trap, he's got the oh. Trouble Tactics Talent. He's got the Branded Fusion. The most important question here is, because we have th seen the Nibiru in Pascal's hand, does he have a Nibiru to cross out it? That's the thing. He is side decking two copies of Nibiru. So it will depend on whether he put in oh. that one copy of Nibiru. And he's looking for his deck there. Okay, he found the... Oh, that is also something that you don't really see that often anymore from branded players. But he is using the Light Hack Sealed Fusion there together with the Fallen of Albas for his branded fusion. To it was go into... Albion. Presumably Albion. Probably Albion, yeah. There he is. And then Albion confused with itself and the Hex. The good thing about Dragoon. Albion, though, is like Albion can still attack. So I think you are probably just going to try oh, to put up 8,000 points of damage here, right? Yeah. So I would probably try to keep the Albion on board here. Because that's like the main difference between Lubalion and Albion. Albion will still be able to attack mm. even though it's used as a fact, and Lubalion can't. And right here, you are going second versus not a whole lot on the side of Pascal. So maybe you're just trying to close that out as quickly as possible. But there is Bestial Magnamut on the side of Pascal. We were discussing it. There is actually... That's also a pretty uh, a bit, big difference. However, uh, the tactics talents, yeah. right? That's just going to make it easier for Gillum to end the game this turn. True. But, oh, and he has Brennan in red as well. But he can't, he can't too good target the Hex Sealed Fusion here. We're going to use the Brennan in red anyways. Was that... Was the... I'm pretty sure the Magnamut Hex Sealed targeting Fusion. the Hex yeah. or the Albaz? It was targeting the Hex, I'm pretty sure. Here comes Lubalion. Well, that. Yeah, that still lets Magnamut get to the field. But it's. Very heads up play summoning it in defense mode. That's though. what I was about to say for yeah. sure. It's very counterintuitive. Your monster's got 2,500 attack. Uh, but yeah, putting it in, in defense to stop yourself from being hit on the first turn by a tactic talents. For sure, that was really, really good. But the beauty of tactics talents is even if you can't win the game this turn, it's got two other very powerful effects. For sure. You may as well look into your opponent's hand after he did nothing basically in turn one. And then you could look into his hand and see that Nibiru, which is really, really frightening. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe we just go for that. How, How many, many summons are that, we Yeah, on? that's <laughs> what I was thinking. I was like, do I mean, Branded often do five summons on the first turn? Yeah, they usually do. 
there are some routes where you don't have to do it, but usually they do. Oh, he's using Nubalion and Albion together to go into... What is he even summoning with that? He, look, not sure. he's, he's not sure himself. He's looking for his extra deck. So he's this is bringing out Dracostopelia here. And this will prevent you from using the Lubellion, unfortunately, as well. Because it's banished by the time it, it's no longer on the field, so you he, can't activate it. He probably had no other way to resolve the Albion no. anymore, right? Yeah, you had, have to resolve had to the Albion the, if you've activated yeah. it, of course, yeah. So that's pretty unfortunate for him because it looked really good, but all his brand infusion did there, together with the branded and red that he also chained, was producing a Dracostopelia, which is honestly not that big of a threat. All it needed was one Magnamood. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> But it shows you the power of the bestial still, and we are going for the draw two here. And I'm not sure if the draw two is the correct approach here, because at this point you have used your branded fusion, you have used the most powerful cards in your deck. And maybe it's time to look at the opposing hand and say, hey, yeah, maybe you can't play either, so I can win this in the long run. Yeah, yeah I was thinking that that was a sensible approach. Once you've seen your opponent just pass the first turn. What are you going to draw into, right? Because yeah. you are going second, you have a lot of blowout cards your opponent's board, but you don't have really any trap cards or something. You use your follow up. You yeah. used the branded in red as well already. Yeah. There's nothing in the deck anymore. But there is branded opening that he picked up for, t for that draw. Discarding. Oh, he discards Ash Blossom. That's also quite bold here of Julem because that would be a card that really helps versus opponent's top decks there. Oh, what Special a summoning coin. out V. Fall of Albus. Is that? That is not legal. That, that's what <laughs> I was about to <laughs> say, <laughs> yeah. It is branded opening for a reason. And Fall of Albus is a lot of cards, or a lot of other cards are considered to be Fall of Albus, but <laughs> Fall of Albus <laughs> is not considered to be a branded card by any means. You do have to question yourself slightly when it comes to this branded deck, because yeah. some cards add branded yeah. cards, some cards add Despia cards, some cards add a card that mentions Fall of Albus. They like to mix <laughs> it up for sure. But now we're summoning out Elliptium and. I mean, Elliptium has an on-field effect, which can increase the attack points here of Dracostopelia, but Dracostopelia would have been big enough to run over the Magnamut anyhow, so that's not really something that helps him too much here. Oh, we're setting a card, and please tell me that you're attacking with the Dracostopelia over the Magnamut as well. Because I don't think that he entered the battle phase already. No, but I mean, we for sure now, with that special summon of Elliptium, are over five summons, so yeah. that Nibiru would also be live, but I mean, why would you even uh, do that before? Because now you're just going to do it in main phase two and you're tributing only the opponent's monsters. Yeah. So that's even uh, better because your opponent is going to have a less stronger Nibiru token there. Maybe. And I mean, you're getting rid of the Dragostopelia, right? Because that one with the few cards that Pascal has, it's pretty huge. For sure, you're definitely going to use the Nibiru here. Interested by the set in main phase one. <laughs> True. It might be from uh, playing too much Speed Duel. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking, because he did that. I was like, maybe he's not attacking. I agree, yeah. That was why you were like, maybe he just uh, won't use his battle phase, because he's setting now. But um, I mean, maybe in this situation, it's even a smart play, because uh, you make your opponent uh, think that you're not going to use your battle phase, and then Pascal uh, maybe is using the Nibiru in main phase one already, because you could just also go into your end phase straight from main phase one. So. Uh, setting the card there might be the correct play, to be honest. But here comes the Nibiru. I'm really happy about the Nibiru, to be honest, because you are going to search for a Bestial, and uh, there's nothing in the opponent's graveyard so far. I mean, you could use your own Magnamu, to be fair. Yeah, you don't really have much use for it. Um, for sure, for sure. So we are summoning the token defense position, and we are going to get another dragon in the end phase, and I think the only dragons he is playing are the Bestials, so we are going to search straight for a Bestial Druid Swarm, I would assume. Is the token bigger than the Nibiru? Um, yeah. In terms of defense point, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, defense points. Is what Elliptium has 2k defense, and our good old Dracostopelia one has 1.9. One so oh, yeah, just it is, about it is yeah, bigger. 900 bigger. It's interesting because you always you, you know the sort of relevant yeah. stat of all of for the monsters, sure. but then when you're asked, what's the defense points of Ad Libitum, which is a monster that's very rarely in play? Absolutely. And I mean, it definitely uh, comes down to battle stats here, quite certainly, because we are getting closer to timeout, so this game has to be decided in the next seven and a half minutes. And therefore, Pascal definitely has to worry about getting a hat here in life points if he wants to win this match. So that Druis Worm will provide an answer to the token. For sure it does. If you just... And you can also... Uh, oh, that was huge, the fountain draw. Oh yeah, because you already have runic spell cards in your hand, so you will be getting a hat here pretty, pretty decently. Can you afford to be using runic cards now with so close to the timeout? That's a good point, though, yeah. I mean, 
you probably just work for your opponent's board here this turn and then try to go for it next turn. That would be my thinking there. You can try to find the troubles and uh, the, the sunny snitch. And then if you have a life or evil twin monster on the field, every time your opponent normal or special summons a monster, <laughs> you gain 200 life points and your opponent loses 200. So that is flashing fire being activated to special summon. Or is it? Yeah. It looks like it's special summoning a Hugin. Hugin? Yep, that is Hugin. I mean, worst case, you could also always go for Moonin, which could provide yeah. you with some uh, life oh, points. Oh, he does have that face. in his, his side deck, so chances are he sided it in. Yep. Wait, not no. Mistaken. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Okay, he can't go for Oh, he plays it in the, oh, in the extra deck already, in. yeah. Oh, wow, that's a very tight extra deck then. For sure. I mean, he decided to only run one gigantic sprite, so he definitely cut down on some crucial cards there. We are drawing into the runic tip as oh, well. Oh, what a great draw there, because now we can also uh, carry on to, to go to the back row, right? We can just yeah. search for runic destruction, so we can take apart the opponent's board step by step. If we want to, we could also go for Flashing Fire, because I think the card he activated at first was... Was it Freezing Curses or was it Flashing Fire? It was Freezing Curses. Yeah, I think it was Freezing Curses, and now he could search for Flashing Fire to get rid of the token if he wants to. Yeah. Does he already have a Flashing Fire in his hand, though? That could also be the case, yeah. He's playing hard to get now with his hand face down. But he decides to not do anything further here. Pass it back over to his opponent. The branded red is still set on the field. Does it actually do anything? We have the Adliptum in the graveyard, but I don't think that there is anything else. I mean, now we have the Cartesia on board. So the right? Cartesia, yes. the, the Nibiru token again is, is light, I'm assuming? It should be, yeah. I'm pretty sure it is light. But there comes Runic Tip on the summon of Cartesia. But now that Cartesia is on the field, it has a quick effect, so you could always yeah. just respond here. Yep, and it also you can use the branded in red to add back the ad libitum and then fuse off the Cartesia as well. Yeah, that works. And there is no response to the effect of Cartesia. The thing is, whatever you're summoning out here with the effect of Cartesia then can be targeted by the spell card that we are about to search. There comes one of the cards from Photon Hypernova, the latest main set to be released. It is Grand Guignol. That was and top top notch pronunciation. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's playing <laughs> it just because he's French, I'm assuming, because that <laughs> name really does sound French to me. Uh, but yeah, it, it looks like it's even the Starlight Rare copy. It looks really decent there. Oh, it's a lovely card. Yeah, Let's you sure. send a light or dark monster from, from anywhere, yeah, in, the extra deck anywhere in the world. One time they'll bring out a card that lets you send it from your side deck as well as your extra deck and main deck, but not quite today. <laughs> yeah, the only requirement is that it has level... to be a level 6 or higher, yeah. But, I mean, there are plenty to choose from. There's obvious, the obvious answer, I'll be on the extra deck. Yeah. But oh. sometimes there's also like a Bestial Lubellion from the main deck that can be a good send as well. Um, but, yeah, here I think we're just going for the Albion. Yeah, he's already grabbing his extra deck there. But is it even resolving? That's the question here. It's, it's got to resolve, right? I mean, we search first with Tip, right? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. So okay, we, we yeah. would already okay, have yeah. an answer for that, but we have to banish the card as well. But that probably is the brand of Fusion that is right there on top of the banish pile. Also, like, the thing is, Pascal doesn't necessarily have to deal damage here, because he is one game ahead, so as long as he doesn't take gam damage here in this game, he's going to win the match. That is absolutely correct, and the Freezing Curses are going to be activated here on the Grand Guignol. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> he's struggling, yeah. and <laughs> I haven't tried to say the name yet. <laughs> Contrarian to uh, his big brother, the Mirror Jade, oh. it does not send for cost. Was that a uh, banish of Despian Tragedy? It looks like it That's is. That's very and useful. also Mercuria. I, I think I saw Mercuria for sure, so... If he even banished both of those, that could be a really, really good banish Because for him. he might be able to just sneak a few hundred damage in, and with only a couple of minutes left, because you can summon the Guardian Chimera oh. with Branded in red. Yeah, true. Oh, we are, look, it was a Despian Tragedy indeed, searching for that ultimate rare Alooper. Th these are some very shiny cards. For real, yeah. He knew he was going to be featured. For he thought sure, I'd best yeah. get the shiny ones. And we have also seen Pascal draw into the Kizikil Frost, a card that does nothing for him. So those draws with Runic Fountain really not putting in the work right here. So, what is he going to do? That crossout designated so yeah. far has not really put in the work, let's I be honest. Crossout designated does have a very specific purpose, though, I would say, in this deck to negate the Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Which, crazily enough, Pascal Kim is not even playing at all. He didn't get the memo that it was the most popular yeah. card this weekend, <laughs> and that he should be playing it, everyone should be playing it in there. But maybe that bold decision of not playing it is going to uh, bring him the victory this weekend. Well, if your opponent's got the 
the dead crossout designator, then it every time. Every time. Has he, has he got two crossout designators now? Yes. Yeah. One is set. One is an ant. So he's entered the battle phase. So maybe he's going to use the branded in red in his battle phase, perhaps. That sounds about right to be honest. Oh, he's not. He just no. set a card, and now this is really close to a time situation, and Pascal will actually just have a turn with all of the runic cards in hand, basically. So he is going to draw some cards. Okay, so we are going to I think first of all activate destruction in end phase. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I love that. That gives me Mystical Space Typhoon in end phase yeah. vibes. <laughs> yep. And also banishing four cards from your opponent's deck. Let's see what they are. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Hagen, Hagen is yeah. mandatory to activate in the graveyard. It has to go back to the extra deck. That's true. But it's nothing he can choose. There comes the destruction on the newly set card, which is just another crossout designator. Banishing four cards. There's Dark Ruler, Called by the Grave, Talons, and Expulsion. Interestingly enough, he even sided in an Expulsion going second. Yeah. I mean, against a deck that doesn't really OTK, you just want to have as many resources as you can possibly probably, have, right? Yeah, probably. You don't have to use it exclusively to summon the gimmick no. puppet. If you tribute summon a branded monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz, then you can summon two monsters to your own field. Yeah, that works Just very another well. handy target for Albion. So, normal summon Kizikil Frost. <laughs> yeah, but he did draw into the good old Sprite Blue for turn, no. so any level 2 monster on board will do it for him to get his Sprite engine going here. One of my favorite engines in the game. I just love these little lightning thunder <laughs> Yeah, they're really, really cool. And the main target for Blue usually is going to be Sprite Jet. You do I get am I'm in love with Sprite Blue's jacket. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Maybe we'll get you one for the next YCS. <laughs> Thank you. I'll I take that as a promise. <laughs> <laughs> but there's Sprite Carrot being searched here, actually. I quite like that, to be honest. You can just go into. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I like that, to be honest. But there oh, comes the Brandon in red. Oh, but there is another Bestial. We knew about that Bestial. There's Bestial Druzebomb on the targeted card. But, I mean, perhaps you don't want to search the jet in this situation because the usual target for the jet is the starter, but you definitely don't yeah. want to activate starter when yeah. there's only 10 yeah. seconds left. Yeah, that's actually in the true. Game and you're on equal life points to your opponent. You have Smashers as well. And at this point. So there is oh, well. the announcement. The timeout has been announced. There is no difference in life points currently in this game and that means that game number two is going to end in a draw meaning the whole match as Pascal won game number one is going to end in a victory for Pascal. So we are still seeing a Kuridis on board just to make sure that GM does not take any damage <laughs> at all in a turn where there is no battle phase and the turn will end immediately after this but maybe something else could happen maybe gm has a last trick on his sleeve but <laughs> no we are having a handshake and Pascal is victorious in the first round of the 250th ycs in london yeah what a start for the title defender basically yeah. this time switching it up not bringing the sky sky the sky striker strategy but the runic life trend sprite deck he likes spells would you he does like yeah sprite. like as we said would you describe runic maybe as the sort of new incarnation of sky striker sort of but sort of how, how do you like it do you think this is a good deck to bring into this tournament do you think this could be the deck we see this tournament being won by well i'm worried when i see this match that even though pascal was in a winning position mm -hmm. it seemed like for almost the whole match it still yeah. came right down to the wire absolutely you know exactly equal life points going into timeout this might be something you know if your opponent's just done a few hundred damage to you in one yeah. game maybe he could have with the branded in red in the previous battle phase just done a couple hundred with a yeah. chimera it certainly feels like it's a lot of work, right? You have to really yeah. work with those yeah. runic decks. That's what I was I was uh, complaining about that when I was playing a lot of... <laughs> you uh, don't like working while playing like Yu-Gi-Oh, right? You're playing Yu-Gi-Oh for fun. It was too much work. <laughs> I was at a tournament and I was struggling to OTK my opponents to, to win games. Yeah. And I think that the runic engine doesn't solve that problem at all. It gets rid of opposing monsters, which is a problem for the deck. Yeah. But it, it doesn't really help you win games. Also, I don't think that... I mean, Kashira is kind of the deck to beat right now. True. It also doesn't make this matchup better. Of course, you can argue, okay, there are big monsters on the Kashira side. Freezing curses help. Flashing fire really helps. But Kashira birth 
is such is a, a fantastic card it is if you don't house. have the destruction immediately to just answer that. So I think that this deck is not the perfect approach to win the tournament if you face a lot of Kashtira. But, of course, those famous players who are on the deck, and let me tell you something, there are a lot of them, they can prove me wrong, but let's hear first what Ed and Pascal have to tell us about it. Thank you very much, Leo. I am joined by Pascal, the winner of YCS 2019 back here in London, and also now the winner of our first feature match. First of all, congratulations. You're back since your 2019 victory. How does it feel to be back here at a YCS in London? Feels good after Corona, finally being here again, having the chance to defending my title. And here you are, Sky Strikers before. This time you're going with the Runic Live Twin Sprite with some Bistials. Talk to us a bit about your deck choice. To be honest, I had no clue what to play, so I just uh, relied on my team, asked them what they are playing and uh, trust on their choices, so I've tested the stake for like two days and that's it. <laughs> Only two days and you're here straight in with the win in that first round, so is there anything kind of spicy that you've put in that deck or is, do you find it's quite a standard build? I think the deck choice itself is kind of spicy, I don't think that that many players are expecting that deck at least in that, um, in the build, like people expecting runic decks, but not with live twins and uh, sprite together, at least my opinion. Yeah, I think the deck itself is kind of a spicy choice for this event, yeah. Well, it served you well so far. So let's just go through the game that we've just seen. So there was a strong opening field from you. There was an evenly matched which cleared your field and there was a, there was a kind of misplay. Maybe it was because he was up against the previous YCS London champion. There was a little bit of nerves because Guillaume misplayed because there was a moment where he could have normal summoned Albaz or returned a Luba to hand to get rid of your Griffin. But that meant that you still have that on field. So at that moment, do you try and capitalize on that moment or those nerves or are you just sort of waiting to see what happens? Uh, I mean, he discarded the Albas for uh, the branded opening, I think. Was it that? And the Albas would have been the out, if I'm not mistaken. So I was like, okay, maybe he's nervous, maybe he's doing a mistake there. I was just waiting and see. I can't change anything about it if he has the out. So I just, just sit on my griffin and wait if, if he has an answer or not. He could have, I think he had triple tactics as well. He could have taken the griffin. But uh, I can totally understand if you're nervous up on the stage, especially if it's your first YCS, as uh, it was for him, so... First YCS and then your first duel of a YCS is put on that stage against the previous champion. That's got to be nerve-wracking. But you managed to banish the Dark Magician from his deck. There was the Super Poly into Dracus Topelia where he cleared the field a bit. And then Unchained Abomination was a really strong field presence for you, which took game one for you. So what is it that you quite like about having big cards like that in the deck? I mean, with the uh, Runic Engine, you have to skip your battle phase, so you have to think about how to get rid of the cards you cannot clear by battle phase. I think Abomination does a good job, especially with the uh, Runic spell that pops, or the Evil Twin that pops, so Abomination can pop an additional card uh, also popping in the end phase in a card, so I think it's a good choice to uh, wipe the board. No kidding. And then we get into game two. There was a first draw of Harpy's Feather Duster, which got rid of your Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. So that was a, a moment like that, because that's a very good card to put up against Branded. So how were you feeling in that moment? I mean, I had Magnum and uh, Nibiru in hand. I have to admit, I didn't expect a Dragoon. So I was uh, pretty glad that I had the possibility to out the Dragoon, especially because he had to resolve his Albion. So he had, he had to use the Lubellion and couldn't get to uh, Dragoon again. Or I, I don't even know if uh, he could have uh, gone for Dra Dragoon, however. Um, I wasn't that scared in the moment he uh, cleared my trap. I was like, okay, I have my backup cards, didn't expect Dragoon. Then I saw the Hex whatever the card is called for Dragoon. I was like, okay, I have the Magnum, I have to hope that's enough. If not, then uh, I will go to, into game three. <laughs> Absolutely, and then you mentioned that Nibiru, that was quite a disruptive moment for it. And then Gilm kind of played quite defensively, and as a result, it just meant that you stuck with that game one, you had that lead, and then it was a long, long game one, which meant that game two slowly ticked down on time. 
and you've taken it. So congratulations again. Are there any decks, considering you said you've only been playing this for a couple of days, are there any decks that you're slightly anxious about going up against over the next few rounds of Swiss? The mirror match, I think, could be kind of hard if other players are considering the deck as well. Um, yeah, and I have to admit, I was a bit scared about Despia because uh, I do not play any Ashes, and that's the choke point for the deck. But it worked at all. So. I mean, it's worked out for you, so congratulations. Best of luck in the rest of your rounds of Swiss. Guys, don't go anywhere. Obviously, the thing that happens between some of these rounds is because we have so many players over 3,600, if there are any time issues at all through those rounds, there will be a little bit of a delay before round two's feature match comes to you. So in between that, we're going to have a little bit of fun with some quizzes and some other content. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more coverage.